there's a lot of like verbal cues that I, I don't think just magically pop up. There has to be training involved and there has to be a focus on personal development instead of volume shooting through text. What happens when somebody sends you a WFG financial survey randomly via text? Well, we're going to find out on Reddit. And as you already know, my WFG is a website where associates can log in to view their dashboard. But that ain't the only thing that's involved in WFG online because sometimes people have experiences as we're going to talk about here and it's important to provide the other side because a lot of these are one-sided on Reddit because it's an anti-MLM thread. Let's just be real. But there was somebody, and I'm going to show you right here. So it says the title, a former coworker just sent me this WFG financial wellness survey. And so, you know, they kind of blocked out the names and, you know, the personal information, which is what they're supposed to do. And then there's a little financial needs analysis picture. And so um, that's... Let's just read what it says. Okay, so this is sent to somebody. It says, good morning, happy Tuesday, smiley face. I attached a form. Could you please fill it out and email back to me, preferably by tomorrow morning? I would appreciate your help. I am a financial advisor with WFG, a Transamerica company. Actually, it's an Aegon company. If you have questions, please call slash text me and then give their number. Appreciate your help. Smiley face. Thank you. And then there's the financial wellness survey, which is part of a financial needs analysis to try to understand what people's needs and goals are. And I think the main thing missing from this particular text conversation was context. And context basically means is, was it a random thing that you're asking a potential customer or prospect to do? I mean, did you basically pre-qualify and you know Jordan Belfort talks about that link will be in the description his book okay let's check that out but anyways he talks about pre-qualifying people and that means understanding what their needs are what their goals are and seeing if there's a fit with the solution that you offer so they kind of just like skip the whole what are your needs what are your goals are and just said hey I'm gonna find that out you know there's like kind of like a mini step like right there between needs goals and and solutions but let's let me get that up front with getting you to fill this out and via text and and it's just like what oh my goodness so what i would say is needed again is that context of like did you ask how they were was there any like catching up like it's almost like somebody went from just meeting a stranger to asking them on a date and it's just like whoa it's not quite stranger to wedding ring proposal which would be asking for the sale right but it was you know stranger just meet you or you know stranger or maybe like an acquaintance you haven't talked to in a while to like hey you want to go on a date you know what i'm saying and then the person could be like um i don't know you or hey how are you how you how you been how's how's karen doing you know you know like so Mm. But it happens. I would say from the associate standpoint, they need more sales training. So Jordan Belfort's book would be great. From the prospect, you can see they're, you know, doing a little Reddit post because they're like, hey, this was awkward. Screenshot, post it on Reddit. Let's see what kind of reactions I get. And then, you know, it got, it got some reactions. And you can see that with the link in the description below. You can check some of that. It didn't get a whole bunch of comments, but it got enough to kind of, you know, start a conversation. And somebody else say, you know, what a pointless survey. Any real financial advisor would prefer to just ask you these questions on the first meeting and talk you through the pros and cons of each. Valid point. Sending it out in advance is just a waste of everyone's time. Yeah, so they're kind of pointing to the fact that, like, hey, like, that's, if you're volume shooting, get some context, you know, build a relationship with somebody or at least rekindle it first before you go in for the kill, you know, or go in for the deal, whatever you, uh, Bless their heart. I think a lot of times in those situations, people have good intentions, but the outcome or result maybe didn't create a positive experience for the other person. And I think that's something to be to be thought of. And and I, I understand people are you know sometimes gung ho and they just want to get out there and do it. And maybe they they didn't think that that was a bad thing or or something that could be improved upon. But there's definitely I mean if they're if they're upline or mentors or whoever or even if they just watch you know some training. A lot of training <laughs> they would probably see that hey I need to I do need to do a little bit more pre-qualified build a relationship you know ask how they're doing you know some just some basic things some small talk and then really assess like 
what's going on like maybe they would ask like after they get the small talk out of the way like hey so you know how are you liking your job or or you know like so what do you do uh, what do you do now and then that way the other person can say what they do for a job and if they ask that back then there's reciprocation and you can say well hey yeah I am you know helping families become financially you know free with the, the products that I offer and then if they're interested they'll be like hey what does that mean or what is that or if they just say oh cool <laughs> they're not that interested in learning more like there's a lot of like verbal cues that I, I don't think just magically pop up there has to be training involved and there has to be a focus on personal development instead of volume shooting through text and then having people email I mean if you had a, a you know a thousand people maybe some some people would probably do it I mean just playing the numbers game but that's there's like good better best ways of doing things and there's bad worse and the worst things or ways of doing stuff and I think that was more of like the bad way because um, there's definitely <laughs> yeah there's better ways for sure all right well that concludes today's video thank you so much for watching didn't mean to bash that person but at the same time there is like degrees of like good and bad of ways of doing stuff and I think it's just important to kind of know what all those options are and try to pick the better or the best one if you can if you're aware of it I mean I know awareness is part of it too so Anyways, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already done so for future video updates and check out the links in the description below so you can continue to watch the other videos in this series and I'll see you in the next video.